town council and what do you want to accomplish the most while in office? I want to thank you, Montclair High School Democrats, for organizing this Youth in Politics video series. There are really three big reasons why I'm running. Uh, number one, I love Montclair and I'm so grateful for what it gives me and my family and I want to give back. Number two, I'm not satisfied with the way things are going now. The current council, most of whom are running again on a slate called Montclair 2020, aren't solving the big problems. School performance is declining. Development is continuing unchecked. Parking is an issue. Transit is unreliable. Pedestrian safety continues to be a problem. We need to solve these issues once and for all. And number three, I think I offer something special in this moment in Montclair's history. I'm an entrepreneur and innovation consultant, and I bring executive experience and fresh ideas. What I would like to accomplish in office is to help Montclair not just bounce back from the current pandemic, but to bounce forward and to be stronger than ever before. One thing we know is that tax revenues are going to decline. I want to attract high value, small footprint businesses to contribute to tax dollars. I also want to make sure that we get all the money from the state and from the Fed that we qualify for. And I want to make sure that our tax dollars work as hard for us as possible by finding places for us to collaborate with neighboring towns or Montclair State and share some services that we all need. Thank you for the opportunity to answer these very thoughtful questions. I have had the privilege of representing the first ward on the Montclair Town Council for the last eight years. I have lived in Montclair for 22 years. I am proud of the fact that my two children are graduates of the Montclair Public School System. I am running for office to continue to serve the people of Montclair, specifically the residents of the first ward. As part of that service, I initiated the first ward beautification day for the last seven years, where citizens of all ages get together and beautify our parks, schools, train stations, and public spaces. Residents provide the muscle and sweat, and the town supplies the mulch, flowers, working gloves, and lawn and garbage bags. It is a perfect public-private sector partnership and a good way for students to obtain community service hours. I advocated to maintain the Bellevue Avenue Library when there was a movement to close it. I fought to maintain the historic designation of the Upper Montclair train station when New Jersey Transit and the state of New Jersey attempted to delist it. I held quarterly meetings at the Bellevue Avenue Library branch where I work closely with residents and community groups to engage in an active but respectful discussion about the issues most important to people. There is still more work to be done, but now there is a firm foundation to go forward. You have emphasized the importance of fiscal responsibility in paying down the debt. How do you plan on achieving this goal? I would continue to address our debt, which impacts so many issues in our town. We have done well lowering the debt from $223 million to approximately $160 million in the last eight years. We initiated a policy whereby for every dollar we spend, at least $3 of debt must be retired. In so doing, we attained a AAA bond rating up from a AA minus. This upgraded bond rating saves the town millions of dollars on our debt service. These funds can then be used to fund infrastructure projects. We have also held the municipal tax rate steady. It's been zero for the last two years. Most importantly, saving these monies also lowers the tax burden for all of our residents, ensuring that Montclair is affordable for everyone, which helps to maintain the character and diversity of our great town. As someone who has not held political office before, why did you decide that now was the right time to run for office? The reason I'm running now is that different times require different kinds of leaders. We're moving out of a moment where prudence and caution was the right thing to a moment where real imagination and executive experience will be essential. In the last eight years, we've seen property values rise 25% here in Montclair. We're coming out of the longest economic expansion in American history. And thank goodness that the council used that time to pay down our debt, improve our credit rating, and give us a foundation and a cushion for what's coming next, because we're going into some turbulent waters. And what we need now uh, is to try things that have never been tried before. Uh, we're in unfamiliar territory. Uh, we need someone who's comfortable with 
uh, bold ideas uh, and has a real executive competence. And that's what I bring. Today, schools are shut down. All non-essential businesses are closed and people are being forced to practice social distancing due to the coronavirus pandemic. What will you do to try to alleviate the coronavirus pandemic in Montclair? And how will you make Montclair prepared for future epidemics and pandemics? Due to the current pandemic crisis, things must be done differently going forward. We all must adapt to this new paradigm. Now more than ever, it is imperative to have proven leadership to address these novel issues. We must develop a plan to protect our residents should this ever occur again. To that end, I intend to ensure that our town health department begins to stockpile critical supplies, such as masks, gloves, and protective gear, not only for our township employees, but for our residents as well. We must also be creative in how we structure payments for property taxes, water, and sewer bills. Monies must be set aside in the budget so that we are prepared to delay residents' payments when they are hurting most. This is the biggest crisis we face since the Second World War. Here in Montclair, our local government needs to be communicating with residents far more clearly, far more regularly, with greater authority. We also need to be assuming a leadership role in coordinating the activities of government agencies and nonprofits, community organizations, and individuals so that we get the most out of everybody's efforts. And we need to be pulling together information about those people and organizations so that folks who need help can find it and so that folks who want to give help can give it. Um, put it all on the township's website. Going forward, being prepared for future pandemics like this, uh, we need to match resources with people far more efficiently. We should probably have a standing list of the most vulnerable residents in town, people who have standing uh, health conditions or a lack of a local support network or don't have a primary care physician or good health care so that they can get help fast. We should also have a job site so that uh, employers who have jobs available and job seekers can be matched. So I hear stories now where folks who work at restaurants that have been closed for the time being are finding work at grocery stores that we all depend on. With incredibly high rent forcing many Montclair stores to close, how do you plan on supporting small businesses? The most important thing we can do regarding rents for small businesses is to make sure the rents are worth the money. That Montclair is a place that attracts customers and that Montclair is a place where it's easy to be a business person. That's about solving the parking problem. That's about making permits easy. That's about having responsive government. Montclair famously pays very high taxes in comparison to other towns, but Montclair citizens often feel that the town does not have enough money to pay for repairs to our schools or our roads. Why does this discrepancy exist? What will you do to make sure that Montclair citizens feel that their tax dollars are put to good use? Now that the town's finances are on a more stable footing, there are ample funds to repair and upgrade our town's infrastructure. I have been instrumental in ensuring that we paved and curved more roads in the first war during the last eight years than were done in the last 25. I upgraded the windows and infrastructure of the Bellevue Avenue Library. Much work has been done in our first ward parks, the Mountainside Park tennis courts and baseball field, the Tours Park baseball field, the walking paths in Yanacaw Brook Park. Please know that as a member of the Board of School Estimate, funds have been allocated to upgrade our schools. However, consistent leadership of the top school administration is crucial. As a member of the board for the last eight years, I worked with five different superintendents and six business administrators. This turnover leads to not only a lack of continuity, but a lack of consistent planning, including capital projects, which must be addressed going forward. Such persistent change has a delirious impact on the administration, including the infrastructure of our schools. Those are my thoughts and together we can continue to build on this work going forward. Thank you.